All right, biologists, let's talk about microscopes. This is theme A, unity and diversity, subtopic A2.2, cell structure. Now, before we get into microscopes, let's just take one second and see that from the discovery, from the invention, sorry, of the microscope here to the final cell theory as we have it today, there were more than 200 years involved. A lot of people contributed to that, so many discoveries. That is to say, science is built on small steps. There's not one single person who does everything. In most cases, things are built on, it's a work of many hands by many people in many parts of the world, spanning many, many years. All right, let's take a look here at this optical microscope. On this side here, we know how to calculate the total magnification of that microscope. It is the magnification of the eyepiece times the magnification of the objective. Now, what are the eyepiece and the, the objective, you ask? Well, the eyepiece is this one. It's the piece where you put your eye. That's where you look. And oftentimes, it's 10 times the magnification, right? So it's going to amplify the image 10 times. The objective is this lens over here. And often you have a set of more than one objective. They have different magnifying powers. They have many amplifying powers. They will magnify by different amounts. The shorter the lens, the less magnification it will impart on the final image. You should never switch lenses by touching the lens and grabbing the lens and rotating this piece here. You always hold this disc and then you switch. Otherwise, you're going to mess up the lens. It's going to get all loose and not going to work properly anymore. Don't do that. Just grab here the disc and switch. In case you are wondering, this is the course and this is the fine adjustment knobs. They will lower and raise the stage so that you can focus your image, focus on your object. The cores will make bigger movements here, make more coarse movements, coarse adjustments, and the fine adjustment knob will move ever so slightly so you can do the final touches, make the image real crisp. So let's say your eyepiece amplifies image 10 times and your objective that you are using at that moment amplifies 40 times. This means your total magnification will be 10 times 40, 400 times. And what do we see in those microscopes? Well, you make slides. Here is how you make a temporary slide or a wet mount slide. You take your specimen, you put on the microscope slide, which is this piece of glass here. Often, but not always, but often, stains are used to highlight structures. That is because many cells, particularly animal cells, they cannot, they are transparent. You cannot see them really well. You cannot identify structures without using stains. So, for example, methylene blue is used to stain nuclei. That's very good for animal cells. For example, iodine stains starch. Remember that iodine, the presence of starch, turns purple. So you can see grains of starch if you're looking for them in a plant, uh, plant cells, for example. Gram stain is used to identify bacteria. There are two types of bacteria according to how they react to gram stain, if they turn purple or pink, and that has clinical implications and diagnostic implications. Then you must cover your specimen with a cover slide and this will preserve humidity. It will prevent the specimen from drying up too quickly. Also will protect the objective lens if you're using a longer, higher power lens. So let's solve this question here. The figure shows a transmission electron micrograph of virus particles. Each virus is about 70 nanometers in diameter. Right, so they're telling you that the actual size of the virus is 70 nanometers. Calculate the magnification of the image. For that, you are going to need a ruler, right? So you have a ruler here, and we know, because we study, we know here how to convert units. This is because this ruler here is in centimeters, and the question gave you the information in nanometers, so you have to convert. First thing, measure the diameter of the image of your virus. And we see here that our virus is about 21 millimeters, right? It's actually 2.1 centimeters, which is the same as 21 millimeters. Now we have to convert that to nanometers because that is, you, you cannot use millimeters 
and nanometers, you have to use the same unit, right? So let's convert one millimeters is 1000 micrometers. So that would be 21 millimeters is 21,000 micrometers. And one micrometer is 1000 nanometers. So I'm going to write down here 21,000 micro is 21 million nanometers. Now we have the same unit. And they told you that the virus is about 70 nanometers. So how do you calculate the magnification? The magnification is going to be the image size, in our case, is 21 million nanometers divided by the actual size, which is 70 nanometers. Magnification means how many times bigger than the actual thing the image is. If I take the actual image and multiply by this magnification, what is the image size that I will get? So I have the same units and the units cancel out. You can see that nanometer cancels nanometer. Magnification is at dimensional. It doesn't have units. Zero with zero. Seven, this 21 turns into a three. And the magnification is 300,000 times. Of course, you have a calculator and you can do this in the calculator especially because it's just a one mark question. They just care about the final number. All right, this optical microscope is really cool and whatnot, but what else do we have? Well, we have fluorescence and immunofluorescence. Fluorescence is the use of fluorescent stains. You can make it glow in the dark. You can see more detail with that. And if you add this fluorescent dye and attach it to an antibody that can target specific structures or proteins in your cell, you can see things that you would not normally be able to see. You can stain, for example, DNA. In this image, we have DNA in blue. We have actin, which is part of the cytoskeleton in red. And we have tubulin in green. Tubulin is a protein that is also part of the cytoskeleton that gives structure to the cell, but during cell division, it is used to form the mitotic spindle. But if you want higher magnification, that means making images bigger and higher resolution, that means having more detail in the image, being able to distinguish more points, then you got to go with electron microscopy, transmission electron microscopy, and scanning electron microscopy. So here we have a transmission electron microscopy image. Now the problem is you can see mitochondria, you can see the nucleus, you can see vesicles over there, you can see much more detail. The problem with electron microscopy is that one, the images are black and white actually, so all color is digitally added. And the second problem is it's much more expensive and it kills the cell. So you cannot see processes like cell division happening with electron microscope. Scanning electron microscope, for example, gives you this really cool 3D looking images because it scans the surface and you have much greater resolution, much more details in your images. You want even more detail? Try the freeze fracture electron microscopy. In this case, you freeze the structure, you freeze the cell and use a blade, a very thin blade to crack it open. Now the cracking happens on the most fragile part of the cells and that includes the layers, the two layers of the cell membrane. You can crack open the lipid bilayer and see the middle of the cell membrane, which is super cool. You can see many details that you could not normally see with that technique. But if you want to see even further, greater resolution in the order of proteins, you can see molecules, you can see proteins here, is the cryogenic electron microscopy. For that, you can use flash freezing. You can freeze, you have to freeze immediately your structure to make sure that all structures are literally frozen in time, frozen in place, not going anywhere. And then you use this very special, very complicated microscope to generate images, 3D models of the proteins. That's it for today. We are going to continue a 2.2 cell structure in another video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.